Well, January is what I like to call fake sequel month, where we look at Italian films that claim to be sequels to American films despite clearly being unlicensed. And man, those kooky Italians, you know? It's not like there were any American movies that claimed to be sequels to popular Italian films, right? R right? There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matt, sad little Matt. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode, Gates of Hell Part 2, Dead Awakening. <sighs> Buongiorno, Internet. I'm called Matt, and we've got a bit of a role reversal today. It seems like someone's dropped an Uno reverse card on all of Italy's fake sequels. Gates of Hell, nowadays more commonly known under the name City of the Living Dead, which is a somewhat more accurate title, is a film from acclaimed Italian director Lucio Fulci. And apparently it was popular enough in the US for distributors to call an American-made film Gates of Hell Part 2, Dead Awakening, despite it not having anything to do with Gates of Hell. Incidentally, there's kind of already a Gates of Hell 2. Fulci considers it part of a spiritual trilogy along with The Beyond and House by the Cemetery. Then again, Fulci's most famous film, Zombie, is also perhaps the most famous fake sequel as it was released as Zombie 2 in all the parts of Europe where Dawn of the Dead was called Zombie. Now if you go looking for Gates of Hell Part 2 today, you'll find it under its original title, Through the Fire. The film got good distribution in Europe, but the only time it played theatrically in the US was its premiere at a theater in Fort Worth that, incidentally, I've actually been to before. After that, it was picked up and altered by shady distributors. The version I'm reviewing is the original Through the Fire release, but the only changes I'm aware of are light censoring to nudity and language. Gates of Hell Part 2 was basically the TV edit. The film is the single directorial credit of Gary Markham, as well as he and the co-writer Brad Potter's only writing credit. Markham mostly seems to be a cinematographer, specifically for movies directed by actor Fred Williamson. But for what it's worth, he's made something really interesting. This is Through the Fire, aka Gates of Hell Part 2, Dead Awakening. The film opens on a woman with a flat tire in the middle of the night. I'm sure she'll be fine, no reason to dwell on it. We meet Sandra, the only one here prepared for this movie. She gets a little... aggressive with the bartender and has to be taken home by Officer Nick Berkeley. Meanwhile, some Satanists, including a Stephen King look-alike for some reason, are worried about the tremendous amount of supernatural power in the area. It clearly calls for a Bible verse, but these guys aren't smart enough to get it. E... X... 2220... What... What the hell does that mean? This movie is... a bit of a comedy. It's a pretty lame verse, though. He that sacrificeth unto any god, save unto the Lord only, he shall be utterly destroyed. See, you can tell this is a Gates of Hell sequel because Lucio Fulci famously loved the church. Some kids are having a sleepover and hear something in the garage. Mom takes a look and sees... I eh, guess we'll never know. Sandra wakes up and gives Nick a thank you call, but it appears he's already got a much better thank you going on. But she asks to meet up with him because she has a problem. Her sister is missing. Afternoon. Where can I get you? A draw of beer, please. Regular or unleaded? I'm sorry, unleaded beer? Wiktionary tells me this is Australian slang for low alcohol beer. 
Maybe this was more of a thing in the 80s, but like I said, this was filmed an hour from where I live, and I have never heard that before. Anyways, the police department doesn't seem to give a shit about Sandra's sister, so she hires Nick as sort of a freelance police, I guess. They go through her sister's things to find anything that may help, and as it happens, she's just got her mysterious amulet back from the cleaners. A weird guy named Randy shows up, surprised to see Nick and Sandra, and later he's seen watching her at home. Next, we see some mountain climbers who happen upon a corpse, and apparently whatever killed it. It was Bigfoot. I'm calling it now. It's the only thing that makes sense. At the beginning, which in this case is at the bottom of the list. I also read magazines from back to front. Oh, he reads manga. While they're hunting down leads, they encounter the mother of one of those mountain climbers. I'm not exactly sure how, that seemed like it had only happened like a day before, maybe even the same day as this. How did she end up on this list? I'm also not totally sure where they got this list. I think it's just a list of missing people, but they don't really make that super clear. Man, I could really go for a refreshing Dr. Pepper right now. How about you guys? No, like, I'm, I'm actually drinking Dr. Pepper as I write this. They do what every great occult movie does and go to the library to research it. Nick even gets in contact with a professor of Hebrew to translate the letters on the amulet, and she's astounded by it, saying one side represents God, or Yahweh, and the other represents Moloch. Men, women, and children were mutilated and then burned. They were passed through the fire to Moloch. Oh wait, that line's probably different in the Gates of Hell version. They were passed th Gates of Hell Part 2 Dead Awakening. To Moloch. That's better. Well, in a lot of cases, the Satan worshippers and witches and sorcerers you may have read about aren't actually disciples of the evil forces, but they're just trying to use those forces for personal gain. Yeah, man, it would be pretty evil for someone to fake their religious beliefs for personal gain. I'm not even referencing anyone specific, but the, the second I said it, you thought of someone. The medallion is apparently something given to those who would kill the followers of Moloch. Nick doesn't buy into all the voodoo mumbo-jumbo, and then immediately afterwards is attacked by some voodoo mumbo-jumbo. And boy, these spirits are horny. Luckily, they get sucked out the air ducts before they get too far. And man, this movie knew what was up eight years before Scream. I'd like to read Marilyn's book. Oh no, you don't. You've obviously never seen any scary movies. The first rule of survival, never separate. I'll be all right. I'll lock the door, and besides, I've got my gun. Oh yeah, that gun was super useful against whatever this was. She goes to feed her cat, which I'm sure will end well. Yeah, he's in the freezer. And Nick takes a fudge sickle without asking. Rude. Although, didn't you just leave? What are you doing back so soon? The Satanists, or rather the Molochists, show up to kill Sandra, and it turns into a big fight between them and Nick. And me personally, I just enjoy when a film mixes a little bit of action into its horror, so I'm all for this scene. Oh, and some fucker with a shotgun and an eye patch shows up. He's, uh, one of the Moloch hunters. Oh, and so is that weird dude, Randy. Guess that resolves that. Golly, Perth! Stop! You'll have fond memories of this pain if you ever have to face it. God, that's such a raw line. Fuck yeah, man. Napoleon Dynamite's brother, Kip, goes to investigate the basement of an apartment with the landlord and gets possessed. This is never referenced again. So Nick and Sandra sit down with the Moloch hunters who blah 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 blah. Luckily, one of the Molochists rolled over on his buddies for some quick cash. This is relayed to the hunter over the phone, but insists Nick and Sandra can't come. Except Nick got the whole thing on tape, because he's tapped Sandra's phones. Oh, and big surprise, the traitor was Discount Stephen King, who gets pulled into a storm drain. Ironic? And I'm pretty sure this dude is my friend Kim's dad. I know you guys don't know who that is, but trust me, this looks exactly like him. Anyways, it's a very action-packed climax, so that's cool. There's something I just love about cheap 80s action. 
I can't describe it. It's just a very comforting aesthetic to me. Maybe I'm weird. Of course, this fight's extra special because the dead people can come back. And she's meeting you here, dickhead. Ah, the dialogue is pure poetry. Sandra. Marilyn? Sandra, help me. Fuck you! Also, holy shit, the makeup in this movie is great. We fucking finally get to see Moloch and... Why wasn't he in more of this movie? He looks super cool. He says, like, two lines and then Sandra blows him up with a grenade. Because, uh, I, I guess you could just blow demons up with grenades. She sees Nick on the way out and is rightfully skeptical. But it's really him and they, presumably, live happily ever after. The end. And that's Gates of Hell Part 2 Dead Awakening. This movie is great. This is just a super fun action horror joint. I admit I'm biased, longtime viewers know this checks a lot of boxes for me. But if your tastes are anything like mine, this is one worth checking out. It's weird, wild, and fast-paced. Sure, some of the acting is lacking and was clearly made with very little money, but to me that makes it even better. That said, I could see anyone expecting a follow-up to Lucio Fulci's movie being disappointed, but hey! Now it's back under the correct title. Thank you, Vinegar Syndrome. And that's where this comes in, my script for Gates of Hell Part 3, where Nick and Sandra meet the main characters from Gates of Hell, as well as characters from The Beyond and House by the Cemetery, finally tying all the films together. And it even ends with a setup for a sequel that will tie together all of the zombie sequels. It's like the no way home of cheap 80s zombie movies. Anyway, if you enjoyed this one, uh, there's a playlist for fake sequel month. And uh, until next time, I'm Matt. And this is Matt's Fun Time Weird Movie Show. I'm Nick Berkeley, and uh, we'd like to book. Don't give me that stuff. I've read about people like you. Now get away from my car. Oh, damn. After Zombie 2, there were like 20 different movies that claimed to be zombie sequels. Better get started.